All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go through, I, I've been playing around with different kinds of pours. I've had a lot of people ask me to film mixing my colors, and that honestly, it takes it takes forever. There, I, there's no way I could sit down and film that and talk through that. It would kill me. So what I will t talk about today is putting your dirty pour together and some things that I've been experimenting with because, well, for instance, when you put your cup or whatever your vessel is that you're going to pour in, where's mine? It's right here. I'm going to be using this today because we're going to do a larger one. When you start pouring in here, if you do, say, larger blots of color in each layer, you do, say, a half of this cup and then a half of this cup, you're going to get bigger patterns of color in, in your work. Does that make sense? At least that's been my experience. If you do what I've been experimenting with lately is doing a pour where I'm doing thin layers, thin layers all the way up and kind of lacing them actually, kind of doing a, a pour like this rather than like that. So it kind of goes layer by layer by layer. So I'm kind of doing backup colors. I've been playing with that and it's, it's kind of a lot of fun. But in that respect, if you're gonna, if you put your layers really close together and put just a little paint, little paint, little paint, you're gonna get obviously more of a mixed look. Those are the same colors I used on the first painting you just saw and I just did the pour cup in slimmer layers. So you get it obviously more mixed. So if you're trying to go for big bold splotches, pour more paint in each, in their turn. It does, I hope that makes sense. So with that said, um, the main colors that, that uh, I'm gonna be working with today, a couple of metallics actually, I've got four metallics up here. Um, this is gold, it doesn't look like it now, but it is a, a gold. This is a pumpkin orange that I had that I added some burnt sienna to and some of this gold. So this is going to come out metallic too. I've been loving this orange. Um, this was kind of a minty light blue green that I had. Added a few drops of uh, uh, turquoise acrylic ink to this. Just a couple of drops to maybe bring it up a little bit, a little darker. I've got this dark turquoise that I'm going to be using. It's already mixed. It's got the clothes trolley in there already. So um, our other one of our other metallics, this is aged bronze. <clears throat> excuse me, aged bronze, and my favorite, the Chroma Metals, um, this is the Red Rojo, or the Rojo Gold, sorry, Rojo Gold, even though it looks red. It's a cool paint to work with. So what I was talking about with my backup accent colors, put my little thing aside here, that's what these are for. That's one of my white, my yellow, because it backs my yellows here, my green, because it backs my blues. I've got brown, I've got black. I will be doing a little bit thicker pores today because I'm doing a bigger canvas, but in between those I'll be lacing kind of in this manner. Make sure this is good and stirred too, but kind of as when I'm pouring it into the dirty pour, it's kind of going to be laced in like this. So it kind of sits on top because I don't want it to do a lot. And that's what I do with these backup colors back here. You can try it. Um, it's a lot to do, but I like the challenge of just adding a peek of this in the back to enhance this color. Um, so that's what I've been practicing a lot lately with. Everything that you see here today has flow troll in it. Everything. Um, I do want to try this though because I tried my other silicone before and everybody's screaming about how good this CRC heavy duty is. So I put a couple of uh, sprays of this into all the cups. So I did the gold, the orange, the uh, light blue, and the aged bronze. Those four have this CRC in them. So that way we can kind of watch and see how it turns out. So what I will do today, because it doesn't take quite as long a time to do as pouring, um, I will show myself doing the actual pour mix. So, so let me get these out of the way too so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I was going to start with my gold. So this being my lightest color, I'm just going to flick a little bit of white in there. Not a lot, just a tad, just to lace the bottom of this. But again, I'm going to be pouring a little bit more into each of these layers uh, than I have been lately because I'm doing a bigger piece today. So this is the gold. I hope you can see this. That's about half of it. Okay. I'm going to go straight to this metallic pumpkin orange that's just so cool. And see, I'm not, I'm not dropping it all in there heavily. I'm just kind of swirling it so they each kind of have their layers, but they're also dropping in between as well. There's so many ways to mix a dirty pour. So it's interesting to see the different outcomes. Okay, so I'm going to lace a little, oh, you know what? I want a little bit of this 
yellow in here right behind that. Just lace in a little bit behind that orange so it'll step out in the painting. We're going to go from that to the green, which is more of a mossy green, but with that yellow, it should transition pretty cool into this aqua. And I'm going to pour a little bit of this in here, about half of this. That's a little thin. You kind of want to be a little bit thicker than that and as far as I'm concerned. I like a slightly thicker pour. It's making it easier. I've done thin pours for so many years that these thick pours are really fun. Got those two blues pretty close together so they can intermingle. This is that Rojo Gold that I love. So I'm going to put this bronze in first because it goes good right up against that dark turquoise. I'm going to put most of that in. I have a thing about metallics. Don't ask me. I, pre I mixed this because I had some paint left in this and I just poured Floetrol in the bottle and mixed it all up. Man, if we're making food, it doesn't look very good, does it? Put a little bit of brown. See, I just laced that. I don't know if you can see that. Just a little lace. I'm just adding little tips of backup color in this. And then I'm going to do black in the end. I'm kind of swirling that. It's kind of a little bit thin too. Not too bad. Okay, and then I'm going to go back through and do this again. Between these blues and see what we get. Just a little lacing. Okay, get rid of the rest. I don't think I put, yeah, I did. My Rojo Gold in there last time. Yeah, I did. I see it. So we're going to go with the aged bronze, which kind of looks very gray right now, but it kind of comes out pretty cool when it dries. It's kind of a warm brownie gray with metallic in it. Rojo Gold, my favorite. Just throw a little more in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to lay some black over the top to mix with that red or that gold, that gold red. That's what we'll call it. Um, I, I'm doing a 24 by 24 today. I feel safe with this. This is probably a lot too much in paint, but I will be straight with you. I would rather, when I'm planning, this is a consignment, so when I'm planning a big pour, I would rather not uh, get caught short with paint. I'd rather lose a little bit if I have to. So I'm going to get this cleaned away, get our canvas on here, and then we'll do our pour. Okay, we have a 24 by 24 canvas here. Um, it was a different painting. I've had it for quite a while. I was never quite satisfied with it. It was originally a, um, a pouring medium and acrylics pour. Um, and then I went to pour, uh, use, do something else over it and it ended up being a botched mess. So I had some leftover paint that I just splooshed on here one day just to give it more one more layer of primer. I do have a little piece of a board back here. It's the thin stuff, like the millimeter that is cut perfect to, to sit back here. It's, it's really loose though, so if I pick this up and show it to you, it'll fall out. So I do have a little bit of construct back here to help my, my uh, paint not pull in the center. All right, Cam, shut up and pour. This ought to be interesting. Yeah, and I've been doing this lately too, and I'm going to keep it up because I hate fighting with corners at the end of the day. 
That's another reason why I kind of did the double layer of pouring. Ooh, that was a little much. Ooh, that pumpkin's really stepping out on this one, way more than I thought it would. Oh, guess who's using all her paint? And we're already getting cells like crazy. Where can I put my pourer? We'll put it here. Wow. Okay, I'm digging this one already. I'm really doing right now is getting those first big bubbles, which of course end up giving me some pretty cool cells if they're sitting right. All right. Yeah, I think this one's a little thin, but I'm okay with that. pushing it up as far as I can get to the edge without dumping it all over and then I'm just bringing it back. Let it sit a little bit between. That's how those big cells come. Oh, I'm getting one that's translucent. That's cool. Which means it won't last into the end product. We won't see it again. <laughs> you don't want to be real quick and loose with this. It's like a meditation. If you do it right, when you're done, you have a beautiful painting and you feel refreshed. If you haven't done this, done this, you might think I'm kidding. But if you've done this, you get it. It truly is a meditation. In patience. Ooh. So far, so good. Looks like a wobbly planet. I think these are some of the biggest cells I've ever gotten. And you know what? You can get as much advice as you want, watch as many of these videos as you want, try every technique you want, but until you just get the experience with your paint in your working conditions or whatever, everybody's are going to be different. You might happen onto something that no one's ever seen before and be the breakthrough. But there's so many ways to do this that there's no end-all, be-all of rules on this. I mean, there's general stuff. If you pour with pouring medium, you still have to seal your painting. A lot of people don't know that. Pouring medium is an additive. It is not a sealant. Oh, I'm digging this so much. That Rojo is cool. It's my favorite. Yeah, that was my stomach growling, if you did hear that. Embarrassing. Come on, baby, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. This thing's a little awkward. There we go. Oh good, I might be able to get rid of that large splotch of yellow. It's right on the bottom. There we go. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. I don't care if I wasted paint on this one. Oh, it was worth it. That was me washing my hands in my bucket. <laughs> I don't have water out here, so I use a bucket. You learn to adapt. Wow. Got some sides to pick up, and I'm gonna burn this a little bit to get some of those bubbles up. Let's see that over here. Look at that under that color under there, just looks like a really bad Pepto, doesn't it? Pepto Bismol. Okay, that's not gonna work. I gotta move this down so I can get to my paint. That's kind of cheating. <laughs> I don't like to do that. 
I like to let it fall, but I don't have enough paint on this end to cover all that I see missing. And I do not want to run this down here again. This is why I have the big one. And if you can't see this part, I apologize. I got it in kind of close so you can see the whole thing, but now that I'm moving around that part's cut off. I am actually just tapping, holding this on the top edge of my lip and it's running down because I was missing some paint on the end here. If I don't ruin the whole thing first. I'm excited about this one. Oh yeah, bubbles popping everywhere. I might have to move this a little bit more because I want to integrate some more light to the dark, but I want to stand back and take a look at it first after getting these bubbles. See how I just lace the white in and you really don't see it? It ended up accentuating, accentuating the colors next to it. Oh, big bubbles popping now. Pretty good. Size. See that couple of pinholes here and there? If you just start pouring or you've been pouring a while, you know what that what I mean by that. Um little pinholes where you can see the canvas and it usually happens on the sides here. Leave it alone. I just leave it alone. As it really starts to set and dry and I still got wet paint on the side here on, where that dripped down, I usually go get a little brush and just reach up and seal that little hole and you'll never know. There's like a couple of areas right here if you can see that. But it's, it's not that hard of a fix and if it's something that really, really bothers you, I'm sorry it comes with this. <laughs> dark area here is so cool. I think we need to bring things down here a little bit more. Got my push pins on the bottom of the canvas. I'm not going to really wield this because at this point it's starting to set. And if you play with it too much, you're going to have mud. And I've done it, and it's heartbreaking. Okay. Oops, let's go back first. I see if I could see the whole thing here. Stand back. You can see some of these really neat cells. You can see that, that kind of reddish color. That's that rojo that I love. Of course, if you've watched any of my videos, you already know that. <laughs> I'm digging it. And see, this is the area down here that I was kind of feeling that there was too much of it, but I just realized, yeah, there's gold in that. So it's going to dry darker, and I can't wait to see what that turns out like. This one was a lot of fun. I'm really curious to see how this one's going to turn out. And then we go to this lighter area that's kind of through the middle, but it's still neat. But you can see right there where it's kind of muddying a little bit. So, I mean, you can see how crisp that is. And then you kind of get into that. It's still pretty. We'll see if it holds. So what we'll do is we'll let this baby dry and then we'll be right back so you can take a look at it.